So when we're in this cross sides top geography, we're working that lockdown and all those different permissions, we're going to get lots of turbulence. The guy in bottom is not going to be cooperative. And there are times when we can work to north-south and that geography can be a little safer. And so this is a permission from north-south. It's a choke, but it lives up to that definition. It keeps pressure on your opponent, uh, it keeps your position, and it is applying that submission. So I'm going to walk us through that right now. As I work to this north-south geography, I'm going to get one arm underneath and one arm on top. So I kind of have an over-under connection. I'm going to have my head towards his tummy, and I'm going to pick his head up as I drive my leg in and put it behind his head. I'm propping him up. He's like in a half uh, crunch. I'm going to take this hand and punch through. It's really important that I get my armpit around his chin or as deep to his neck as possible. The tighter I am here, the better the permission. So I'm going to punch this through. Boom. I'm going to cross my hands underneath, and I'm not going to grab. That's going to make it worse. I want to let him slide. I'm now going to walk out and sprawl or landslide my hips away as I pinch my elbows in. As I do that, there's going to be a lot of force. Perfectly done, it should be a carotid choke. If not, you're still going to get a pressure choke. It's going to feel like his head's going to pop. A great permission in this geography. This one's a choke, okay? And this one I get off a of north-south. Um, I get it off of north-south because when guys get pretty frustrated, um, north-south is kind of like a safe place. It, it makes them even more frustrated. So what's going to happen is the guy's popping and turning. I end up moving in north-south, and typically I find myself with one hand over, one hand under. What I mean by that is one hand's out by his head, one hand's down by his armpit. Okay. What I like to do here is I'm going to grab his head, and I'm going to walk my legs underneath him. So I'm going to go right here. Okay, I'm putting his head on my thigh. My head is in his tummy. I'm going to push this hand through, and it's going all the way through my legs. The other hand, which is coming under the armpit, crosses. Okay, at this point, I'm going to sprawl back. I call it landsliding my hips, and I'm going to pinch my elbows. So I'm right in here, and I'm going to go right there. Okay, and it's a choke on this side. Okay, now the choke is a setup. It's really difficult with people who that have narrow necks. Okay, it works. The bigger the neck, the easier it is. Said another way, I've yet to get this successfully on Michael. Okay, pencil neck. Okay, <laughs> and and we don't want to cut that one. That one needs to go there. No, I'm kidding. So the point is, I can't get Michael because he knows how to keep that neck and so forth. The bigger, like you know, guys that are really thick, I do. I'm more successful because they give you a bigger, you know, kind of sphere, a bigger circle to work with. Okay, but the key is the setup. Once you drop into this, it's very hard to adjust. So let's talk about that setup one more time. I have one over, one under. Watch what I do. I come up on my feet and I walk my knees forward. Boom. Okay, I put his head on my thigh. I punch this hand all the way through. I need my elbow tight. Okay, boom. This hand crosses, so I'm crisscrossed. I don't grab. That slows me down. I just cross my wrist. Now I'm going to sprawl back. I'm going to pull my shoulders back as I bring my elbows in. Boom. This is one, though, that takes some timing. There's a feel to it. Okay? The biggest thing that I found as far as coaching <coughs> that helps people, and it goes back to body geometry, is I want Eric's chin deep into my armpit. Okay? It will not work if he's like this. I need to punch my arm through so my armpit collapses as tight around that area below his chin as possible on his neck. If I'm loose and there's any wiggle room at all, he's going to be able to breathe. He's going to be one of those slow leak tires. And he can sit there for quite a while. Okay, so one last time. I'm here north-south. One hand is over his arm. Other hand is free. I walk up. Boom. I put his head on my shoulder. The reason I do that is to get a good punch through here. I drive deep through. Right there. Other hand crosses. I now sprawl backwards. Watch my hips. They go away as I pull my shoulders back. And then I can even walk on my tiptoes backwards. So I'm walking on my tiptoes backwards. And then you're, so you're, you're back there. You grab just them? cross your wrist. Cross now, as you sprawl you back. My own wrist? Uh, what? Or do you cross them? Just cross them. Now, as you sprawl back, pinch your elbows and land slide. You gotta pinch your elbows. Go away. Oh, 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 like that. Now go away. Keep going. Okay. You got to walk back even just a smidge further, but that's it. It's like a, a noose that just gets I've tighter and tighter. I've tried it on people, but I've never gotten it. Yeah, it's just, you got to get that feel. But the, the, the key is get your elbows, the key is to always get your elbows really tight early.
from here. Prop it up. Ah, Jesus, he didn't have no net. You didn't get my windpipe right. Well, it's not supposed to be windpipe. It's supposed to be carotid, if it's anything, because windpipe's right here. Yeah. But really, what it more, than more than not, it's not really an elegant choke. It just feels like blood pressure, your head's going to pop off. But your neck is so small, I can barely find it. It's really hard. Yes, sir? I got a question. What if he pushes his uh, chin down before he actually... Oh, it's, I'd rather just choke, dude. Um, it, it, it becomes, uh, yeah, it does. It becomes really kind of like a TMJ kind of thing. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not a choke. It's, it's kind of a brute fort thing. They're going to get pretty spastic and want to get out of it. Um, at the same token, though, this is a choke that if you, you need to be patient with it. Like, you know, I've sat there as long as a minute and a half. But at the same token, don't burn your forearms. Look where you end up. If you, if you burn the batch, you're still north-south top with great position. And you've still just made him work really hard. Okay, so let it go. Don't burn your arms out and then just keep working those arms. Keep playing your game. Okay, so don't stay on a choke so long that you, all of a sudden your forearms are dead and you can't do anything. All right, um, that one's an acquired taste. That took me a little while to develop. The key thing is getting that chin up into your armpit. It's also, as you sprawl away, there's a tendency when we sprawl to let our elbows flare. So when I'm here and I sprawl, a lot of people will do this. Right? What we really want to do, that's why we're crossing, is that as we sprawl, we're doing this. Right? Our elbows are getting tighter. Okay? And so it's that, it's that leverage between your rib and your elbow. Ooh. See, and, and watch my arm. I guess you can go like watch my thumbs because it's hard to see with the gi on. But as I sprawl back, I'm rolling my arms. Right? As I sprawl back. So I'm here, and I'm like this. My palms are up. I'm going to sprawl, and then my palms are going to rotate. So if you get that tight rotation, boom. But the key is everything that's in the setup. It's really hard to tighten this submission up once you sprawl. It's all in the preset. If you get a real tight preset and you sprawl well, you're going to get them to tap. If you don't, it's going to be kind of like, ah, you're going to feel it. Let that go and stay in positional dominance. We want position first.